This is uh, the video lecture for sections uh, 13 and 14 of chapter 12. We continue looking at the evolution of the life of the star. We were talking about variable stars in the previous section. And uh, here we look at, specifically at the Cephites. The Cephites, they come in two different uh, flavors, if uh, we could call it that. Um, there will be some Cephites with this uh, relationship of the luminosity to the period, and there will be some other Cephites with this other relationship. The type 1 Cephites tend to be more metal rich. In other words, they have elements that were produced in a previous star, so kind of a recycled gas, and they are about 10 times more luminous than the type 2 Cephites, which are metal poor. A metal poor star means that um, they were formed, these uh, stars were formed when there was no um, uh, recycled gas from a previous star. So they are kind of uh, original stars produced, uh, you know, long time ago. The fact that um, the luminosity is related to the period in, the, in this log, log scale means that uh, if you measure the luminosity of a, of a variable star, you can come back here. I mean, if you measure, me measure the period, you can extract the absolute uh, luminosity of the star. And this is a very useful tool to find how far the distance of uh, the star, because knowing the luminosity amounts to knowing the absolute magnitude. And knowing the absolute magnitude and the apparent magnitude can um, help us calculate the distance. And usually these uh, cephites are so bright that uh, we can see them from very far away. And for, we can see them uh, at distances at which we cannot use the parallax uh, method to find uh, the location. But here we have another way of doing it. The cephite type 1, cephites uh, type 1 are about 10 times uh, brighter than the uh, cephites type 2 that are dimmer. They have tend to have larger uh, periods of, of uh, variability and the variability uh, changes by a factor of 10,000. Now the type 2 cephites, they have uh, periods of one and two days, whereas the solar, the type 1, vary in hundreds and tens on, or up to 100 days. And uh, luminosity is, again, the type 1 are more luminous than type 2, and it's uh, well, usually four times greater. And because they are so bright, we can see them uh, at, uh, at a distance way larger than than those that we can detect uh, the measure the distance to the parallax uh, method again i ask you to stop the video read the questions answer them and i'm going to give you the answers now And we continue with section 14. The stars, turns out that um, depending on how they were formed, they can um, form clusters. And uh, these clusters, from time to time, they can be globular clusters. In other words, they can form a nice sphere. And most of these uh, globular clusters turns, turn out that they are all stars metal poor, that's how we know that they are old, and they are in the, distributed in the, in the form of a, of a sphere, and they are uh, gravitationally bound, in other words, they form that uh, spherical shape, but uh, the stars cannot escape. 
and because they are old then there are not um, too many OB stars those that are extremely bright when they're young but died very rapidly of course uh, the name of globular comes because of the shape the, um, the size of these is uh, up to say 200 light years across and the fact that they are all, um, the, uh, all of them are of the same uh, age they were formed about the same time now unlike the open clusters open being those clusters that are not bound that contain young stars these guys they cannot escape so they are not open this they are gravitationally bound and uh, for instance in our own galaxy in the Milky Way we have found 157 globular clusters in this video you can see the relationship of, of a globular cluster to uh, the HNR diagram and I encourage you to download my PowerPoint presentation and uh, activate it and make it uh, show you this uh, video or simply copy the link and see it uh, on YouTube now globular clusters are uh, useful in the sense that they can tell us how old they are as, um, as a, a globular cluster is formed roughly around with all the stars being formed roughly around the same time then the following effect takes place the larger ones will m make it to main sequence faster than the little ones so the main sequence will get populated up in the in, in the region of high luminosity and high temperature but um, as time goes on the medium size and the smaller size stars will reach main sequence but then the younger more brighter stars the ones that are uh, near the top of the main sequence will start to move out as they become red giants the big ones tend to live less time tend to spend less time in the main sequence than the little ones so consequently they will move out of main sequence uh, faster so we end up uh, with situations like the one depicted here in which uh, the main sequence of course at some point was uh, filled all the way to the top to this corner up here but this one, these stars the big ones somehow ended up uh, their main sequence stage and began moving to towards the giant and super giant region and then bounce back into this region that we're going to call uh, we're going to see later is known as the horizontal branch but uh, in the meantime while while all of that happened the rest of the cluster will stay here it's still waiting for its time to abandon main sequence and become a, a red giant so this turn off point tells you that all these guys that used to be here are now here and we can estimate how old just by looking at this turn off point we can estimate how old the um, cluster is so cluster the global cluster tend to be old and they don't have high mass main sequence stars because those uh, high mass main sequence stars already became red giants and moved away from main sequence but uh, the what gives us uh, a clue of what happened is that uh, these clusters do not have uh, stars on the upper half of the main sequence and um, these upper high mass stars moved out of main sequence and became giants now this um, clusters tend to have this grouping here the so-called horizontal branch stars and these are ones that undergo helium fusion and in their course and they have uh, uh, that much luminosity which is about 50 times the luminosity of uh, the sun eventually these stars will become 
we'll go back to the main sequence and uh, we'll continue doing whatever they do next, which we're going to see in the next uh, chapter. Um, the one that I described here, the cluster that I described, is the Messier 55, with the, this half missing, and with the horizontal branch showing. These are the guys that experienced the helium flash and now are undergoing uh, helium fusion and hydrogen shell fusion. This is a superposition of uh, many, many stars, 41,453 stars, taken by the satellite Hipparchos. And if you plot all of them, you can see the main sequence here, but you can also see um, a lot of giants and supergiants and this bending this way showing you that there are many groups of stars that are already abandoning the main sequence and to go and going into the uh, giant and great supergiant uh, phases this uh, this is so thick because it doesn't correspond to a single cluster it corresponds to a superposition of stars this here this diagram here shows you many clusters and to understand this one let, let us take the youngest one which is the new galaxy catalog 2362 this one goes all all from all the way from the top all the way to the bottom we there are stars that go all the way from top to bottom so it is young it's a young uh, group because uh, the big ones are still there they have not moved into the red giant region there look at the uh, the Pleiades for instance Pleiades begins here and goes all the way here well the rest what happened to the rest? They already moved out and they are not plotted here. So the Pleiades left the main sequence. It is leaving the main sequence around here. So how old is the Pleiades? It's about uh, 100 million years, of, uh, years old. Now the Persei, it is leaving the main sequence uh, around here and it is 10 to the 7 years of age. Um, if we look at this one here, this one already lost most of the upper part and it is uh, already moving, taking stars from uh, very small masses into the giant region. That means that uh, this is a very old uh, cluster because these guys are very low mass and they are already abandoning the main sequence. So it is somewhere between 10 to the 10 and 10 to the 9 years, and so on. So the age of a cluster can be estimated by looking at the turnoff points when they come out. For instance, we can say that the new galaxy catalog 752 is way older than M for the Messier 41, which is roughly separating from the main sequence at this point. Going back um, to the same other case, we see that the high mass, high luminosity, are missing because they already became giants. And over time, the main sequence gets shorter and shorter. And um, this is known as the turnoff point. And these are the guys that are just beginning to have uh, their cores filled up with helium so that they start moving, reducing the hydrogen fusion and moving out of main sequence. So the age of those stars uh, can be uh, calculated by looking at the turn of point. This is basically the age of the cluster. This is the Messier 55 and it shows that um, the stars that are very small in size, 0 0.8, which is a little less than our own sun, are just leaving the, the sequence, we, and that means that they, uh, this cluster is approximately 13.5 billion years, which means that it was formed when the universe was about 1 billion years. 
This is going to show you the evolution of uh, theoretical clusters. It's a cluster that was created just to show you the effect. And it contains 100 stars, and they are be they they, they begin at the protostar phase, and then they move into pre-main sequence, and then main sequence, and then they start moving into the giant region. Now I'm going to let it run. So initially we have that the big ones are already in main sequence. When the little ones are in main sequence, the rest are coming out. If you download my PowerPoint, you can run this uh, several times, but I can explain it uh, by one frame at a time. We have the protostars here before they reach main sequence, and these guys are going to come this way. And of course, the upper, the higher, the larger stars will reach main sequence first. You can see that they are getting closer. The previous image is now here. This is the second image. Now they are getting closer to the main sequence. Now we have a few on the main sequence and the rest are getting closer. We have more on main sequence, but the rest is still not there yet. We have um, the next stage is here. We have most of them most of them on the main sequence but some of them are already moved into the red giant region and more and more and you can see a turn of point is moving down and down up to this point so this is about a hundred million years and the turn of point is now down here is four and a half billion years. Now, going back to the clusters, the clusters have different um, type of stars, and because of that, they are classified into population one and population two uh, stars. The open clusters are not bound, are not, are not distributed on, on a star. But nevertheless, they, they are close enough as to be classified as a cluster. Now, these uh, open cluster stars, they are metal rich. They contain elements other than hydrogen and helium. Which means that they, that the stuff was produced by a star that somehow exploded and um, shared the, the nebula, produced a nebula that was used to form the solar star. So these uh, open, open clusters, the open clusters can have young stars and they, they can still have a formation of stars. Like for instance, our sun is, an, is a star that is made out of uh, uh, metal rich stuff. All of these guys are known as population one stars, whereas the, we concentrate on not on the open clusters, but on the uh, older globular clusters then we know that these guys are bound. If, if they had any young stars, they, it, it already died. And most of them are metal poor, which means that they were formed not out of recycled material, but out of fresh material long, long very long time ago. We can see the spectrum of uh, metal poor in a metal rich star the metal poor would be this one doesn't have any metals it has hydrogen and you can see just a, a few traces of something whereas um, the population one is this one here which is metal rich you can see many many lines of the light that was absorbed by the elements on the atmosphere of that star And these are the questions for this section. Again, I ask you to stop, answer, and then come back to check your answers.